Hey guys, welcome back to Hong Kong Star Rail. In today's video, we're talking at Jing Liu and why I personally think that she is the best character currently in the game. Now, please feel free, drop it in the comments, pause now, tell me if I'm crazy, you think I'm stupid, or if you do agree with me. This is my personal take, so I'm not telling you this is objective truth, this is my subjective opinion, uh, and I'm going to go through my reasoning through it, and if at the end of the video you disagree with me, once again, please let me know, uh, because I love these types of discussions. The game is more of a casual game, so having discussion is really fun around the game. Previously, Imbibra Lune came, and he sort of just shot well above the rest in his raw multipliers and with Jing Liu I think she's been delivered really well in that she didn't overshoot Dan by a ton like it wasn't a massive power creep I feel like they're on a, the same sort of level who knows when the big brains come back with some like team calculations on max possible deliverable damage between the two of them maybe Imbibital Lune comes out on top but you can zero cycle with Imbibital Lune you can zero cycle with Jing Liu they are both fantastic characters and like I said the damage feels very comparable but I wanted to go through the reasons why I actually think she is a better unit. Now, before we get into it, I just wanted to say that some of the footage that I'll be playing in the background, the early game stuff, I ran up one of my failed rerolls to 78 pools and got the Jing Liu, and I've been using her in the early game, and dude, it's crazy. So we'll talk about early game in a sec, but the other footage will be uh, some zero cycle clears that I did with a bunch of different teams on the viewer. Big shout out to Brandon, one of my viewer summons that we did. He let me play around with his account. Now that is an E1 S1 Jing Liu, so it does have the one Eidolon on it, just so you guys do know. But a lot of his other characters aren't built. The Bronya's got like three traces because we pulled it during the summon session, so there are some uh, little bits in there, but that just so you know what's playing in the background. But let's go through it. First of all, early game. If you are a new player coming to the game or you're, you want to start an alt account, I think now is a great time. If you're coming with the PS4 launch, I think Jing Liu banner is an amazing value banner to pull for right now. You obviously have Jing Liu, who once again, I think is the best early game, like the best progression right through the game character. I thought Blade was really good as well, but Jing Liu is just absolutely fantastic. And we'll go through why in a sec, but you've got her on the banner. Then you've got Ting Yun, who's one of the best four star supports, which you can go ahead and get dupes of and get set up. And then you've also got Ching Chui. Now, some people may not like Ching Chui slash QQ is what I like to call her, uh, but if you do like her, I'm a big fan of her. I think she's a great four-star DPS, probably the best one in my personal opinion. So you can be pulling for Jing Liu and... If you're getting dupes of uh, Ching Chui, she really wants E4 or E6, I ideally, but E4 is where she starts getting the bigger damage to be a good damage dealer. So you can get some of those dupes and then you can have both of your damage dealers kind of ready to go. Um, the other one is Sampo, who unfortunately isn't too great. If it had like links on the banner or something, it would be fantastic, but it does just have Sampo for now. So that's not the greatest one, but the rest is good. I think it's a fantastic banner for new players if you're going for it. So let's talk about, because mainly we are comparing uh, Jing Liu to Imbibital Lune. Like I said, I think something like Blade is a fantastic early game uh, progression through character, stuff like that. But Jing Liu versus Imbibital Lune, Jing Liu in the early game absolutely just wipes the floor with him. I also ran up one of my other failed rerolls to get Imbibital Lune back in Imbibital Lune times. Uh, and I just he just felt so clunky in the early game because if you guys remember back to those stages when you're like you know your characters are level 40 you need to if you're pushing like the hall of memories or something damage that you take is incredibly high and you need to be healing and shielding all the time i i'm running through with march and links and i pretty much need to use those two skills all the time so with imbibital lune you don't really get the chance to use his fully enhanced basic attack until you use an ultimate with him and then you get those extra squama sacra sancta if that's how you say it stacks and that's what allows him to finally use his triple stack whereas jing Liu in the early game i feel like you can just always play her uh, the way she wants to be played because she just uses that one skill. If you've used the technique before going into battle, um, she uses that one skill, then she's she's in her transmigration state. And then she just, she can hang there, especially if you're using a Ting Yun in the early game to support her. So I think she's fantastic in that sense. Uh, but the other thing with her is she can crit because of the way her passive works. 
she can crit in the early game, whereas other characters, you, you know, you're sitting around 15% crit rate, you're really struggling, but because she gets that crit boost, she's not critting all the time because you haven't got her built properly, but she does get some crits, which is really nice in the early game, having a character that can actually get some crits uh, and deal some nice damage. So I think she's fantastic in that sense. Now, I just want to quickly touch on her technique for a second because her technique is cracked. It's like they've taken all the, like, it's like early on when they were making techniques, like they all had something to them like maybe like Bronya, you could uh use it and then swap to another character and then still get that benefit when you go into combat uh then there was other ones like march march has a chance to freeze then you got something like ching Chui, who gives herself uh, an extra tile at the start of battle and then you've got ones like zilo who could stealth around the world and and basically they've combined every beneficial effect that a technique has had and put it into one technique with her. And I think it's absolutely cracked. So you've got it that you, you can run around the open world. And it's kind of like Zeal's stealth to me. Where instead of them not seeing you and standing there doing nothing. You just freeze them and they stand there doing nothing. And you can still interact with things. Because once they're frozen. They don't actually target you for aggro. They get the question mark. They don't get the exclamation mark. Whatever it is. The red one. They don't actually run after you. So that's fantastic. But then when we look at combat sense. It's one of those ones where you can swap away from the character. Uh, and you still get the effects then when you go into combat you get control but you don't just get the, the freeze on the first wave you get it on every wave for the battle and then on top of that she's also gaining a stack of her um syzygy at the start of battle so it, it's it's the complete package where we talk about techniques i just wanted to mention that for a sec because it just blows my mind how good that technique is so like i said early game jing Liu, one of the best DPS, in my opinion, to progress your account through a game. She doesn't require the skill points. She leaves your team open for the skill points to heal and shield. Because let's face it, in the other game, you do need to do a lot of that if you're trying to push the uh, whole of memories and stuff like that. Moving on from that, we look at Endgame. Now, Endgame, we pretty much have two modes. We have the Swarm Disaster, which is kind of a one and done anyway. Um, but the Swarm Disaster, when we compare Jigliu to Ambivital Lune, Ambivita Lune wins. Uh, the, the, the game mode was designed to sell him, uh, in my opinion. So, of course, he's going to work. It's all about using a bunch of skills and then enhancing your basic. Like, the... The whole thing was designed to sell uh, in Bibble Lune, and he does it well. He absolutely slaps that thing. So he does get the win there, but I don't weigh that as heavily as Memory of Chaos, personally, just because, you know, you do it and then you're done, and yeah, you can go back for the little achievements, but that's basically where it is. But when we look to Memory of Chaos, this is where, at the start, I think it's a draw between them. Honestly, I think they're both fantastic units for it. I think it's a draw between them on damage dealing uh, capabilities, but I think Jingliu wins out a little bit in that she has more team variety. I In Bibble Lune, you kind of got to run him as a hyper carry. You can't really run him with other DPS. He does use a lot of skill points. Uh, so you want to be using those support units that can generate the skill points for him uh, so they can do his thing. Obviously, you've got the Bronya trick where you can use In Bibble Lune basic to generate a skill point, Bronya boost him, then he uses triple and enhanced basic. But in general, he's going to be used as a hyper carry most of the time. The thing I love about Jing Liu is you can bring another damage dealer with her. She has that amazing synergy with Blade, which I absolutely love. Blade uh, Blade with her is just, it's just fun. Even if it's not the best, like, max DPS, I, I still zero cycled with it. It still feels fun. I, I love Blade. I love her. They both have got really cool play styles. I think it's fantastic. So I love the way that she can be brought in with other DPS. Clara is another option. Not as good as Blade in my opinion, but still like you can bring that type of character with her because she doesn't have that massive skill point consumption. She can be run incredibly well as a hyper carry with like Ting Yun Bronya, uh, Ting Yun Pella, uh, stuff like that. Um, you know, you got those characters that can really make her a hyper carry for zero cycling as well. But um, in general, I think she just wins out on the team variety that she has compared to Imbibital Lune. But when we look at raw damage capabilities, uh, they're very similar in my mind. Uh, and I think they've done a good job balancing her damage compared to Imbibital. Uh, this time, instead of what they did with Imbibital compared to every other character. So... Moving on from that one, I wanted to talk about their auto capabilities because this is a big thing for me. I, I'm a big auto person um, on my account. You know, I got Lorich and Blade, just auto central. I got Mono Quantum, auto central. Because yes, zero cycling is a thing if you want to push for it, but a lot of people just want to jump into memory chaos eventually once they get to the, their account to that point and just run through it and not really stress too much. And the thing I'll say about Jing Liu is 
that her on auto is quite nice. It's not perfect because she will sometimes, you know, use an ultimate at a non-optimal phase. But in general, if you're not looking to zero cycle, it's not like crippling your run. Uh, and she still does really good damage, really reliable damage. Whereas with Imbibita Lune, his personal AI isn't too bad. If he's got skill points, he will use them. The problem is like sometimes he'll use a one skill point one when he's only got one skill point. It's like, I would have rather you just do a normal basic and generate one. So his AI isn't the greatest in that. But if he's got three, point, three skill points, he will use them, which is fantastic. The problem comes in the AI of all the teammates you try and put with him. Uh, you need quite specific auto teams to try and make him guarantee that when he has his turn he will do the triple enhanced basic uh because you can often get into pickles with you know your t the uh, all the other characters on ai who aren't the greatest and will use their skills when you id sometimes don't want them to i.e pella is a fiend for this for me if you're using a pella she'll always try and use that skill it's like pella i just want you to basic the whole time please but um but yeah not not saying that she's the best with the Luna. that was just the easiest example i could think of but um yeah, that's my thoughts. On order, I think Jing Liu wins out, even though she's not always 100% optimal. Like, even if she's play doing bad plays on auto, uh, she's still running at about like a 75% uh, like e efficiency type rate. I, I feel like she's still decent, even if she's not at peak optimal user alt at this time so that is that one so that um those are my four main things that i was looking at was the early game the end game the team variety and the auto capabilities now the obviously are the other things that you can look to uh one the appearance of the character that's completely subjective up to you guys it's whatever you guys want to pick me personally i like jing liu over in bibita lune but obviously i'm skipping jing liu because i just love topaz and numbi so everyone has their own preference on that stuff and i think it's one of those games where you can really just pull for whatever you want so it doesn't matter too much at the end of the day just pick the character you like and the other one is play style which everyone once again is subjective uh, i'm really looking forward to once again topaz and numbi because i like that follow-up play style i really want to use topaz and numbi with clara that's just what i love but uh uh, in terms of uh, Bibble Lune and Jing Liu, I really like Jing Liu a bit more. It just feels like she takes so many actions and she's always doing something and it just feels really good. In Bibble Lune, it is nice when you get that big dragon behind you and you like sp spin it up, but uh, you know, he lacks that RNG factor that QQ has. And for me, play style wise on a DPS character, I don't think anyone's ever really going to match QQ for me because I just find the gambling gremlin way too much fun. But anyway, guys, that is it for Jing Liu. Once again, let me know you your thoughts uh do you agree with me do you disagree this is just my personal opinion i am happy to be wrong you guys let me know in the comments as always thanks for watching hope you have an awesome day and i look forward to seeing the next one cheers